Aubameyang has been stripped of the captaincy and will be missing the next match against West Ham. And for me, this has been the right decision by Mikel. He is the captain, the highest earner, and when you wear that captain's armband, you have to set the standard and follow the rules for the rest of the dressing room to follow. I understand that his mum's not well, and I understand that family come first. But to be fair to Mikel Arteta, he allowed him to go and check on his mum. But when you've got a curfew, you have to abide by that curfew. And if Arteta was to allow him to get away with this, everybody else that's watching, the staff, the players, they will see that there's a double standard and they will lose respect for Mikel Arteta. I mean, Aubameyang was allowed to go back to where his mum is in France and visit her, but he came back late. And rules are there to be followed. And for me, it's the right decision. If you break the rules, there have to be consequences no matter who you are at this club. And especially if you're the highest paid player, employee of this club. So for me, it was the right decision. I understand that family, you need to be there for them. And I understand his want to go and see how his mum is. We don't know all the details. You know, we're not privy to the, that type of information. But at the same time, for me, Aubameyang, you've got the captaincy. If you're told to do something, you have to do it. And you have to keep professional. You know, we've got a lot of youngsters in, in this club. And some of them are, are turning into superstars like Saka, Emil Smith-Rowe. And they're going to be watching Mikel. And they're going to be assessing him by how he deals with Aubameyang. So for me, I have no problem. You know, family is very important. But it wasn't like he was, he was denied being let to go and see his mum. So for me, on this one, I have to call it as it is. And I think Arteta did the right thing. The only problem is he hasn't kept it consistent. You know, did Xhaka get this type of treatment? You know, so there's other players that's been around that haven't had the same type of treatment. You know, they've been able to get away with doing things that are unacceptable of, of, of captains or any Arsenal player, you know. And that's where, for me, Mikel Arteta gets it wrong. His man management is really bad. The way he dealt with Guendouzi isn't the same way he dealt with Xhaka. The way he deals with Saka isn't the same way he deals with Martinelli. The way he deals with uh, Aubameyang isn't the same way he deals with Pepe. And, and these are the examples and these are the things that will ultimately be his demise. Because he's going up against a lot of players, but he's not keeping it consistent. And you can't be doing this, you know? He did the right thing, but it has to be the same energy all over with every player not with some and not others you know and i'm sure the, the the players do see this but for me i understand Aubameyang, but i'm sorry you're you, you get paid to have this kind of lifestyle for your family to have a good life for you to have a good life you know you don't play for arsenal for free so there's rules and regulations just like if any of us that are at a job there's expectations of you you are a paid employee and if you don't meet those standards, you either lose your job or you're penalised for it. So, it is what it is. Without further ado, let's get into Arteta's press conference. And the first thing he was asked was on the captaincy decision. Arteta said, I don't have much to say. I think it's a real clear statement from the club. It's a decision we have made following the last incident that we had with the players. And this is where we stand. But fair enough for me. Um, he was asked on how many incidents there have been. He said, I don't mind you asking, but I can't go any further on that, as you can believe. When we had to make the decision, it was because it was the right one to defend the interests of the football club. Um, what else was he asked? Whether he broke the news to Abba himself on how Abba took the, took the news. He said uh, he had to accept the decision, or well, obviously. Um, on who the next captain could be. Okay, cool. What, what do you think, Arteta? Well, we have the leadership group. We have different players who have been nominated to be captain. In the last game, it was Laka. We had Granite, who has been captain as well. So we will follow that. It, it is a really unpleasant situation and is not the moment to any rash decisions. 
The leadership group is really strong. It is one that communicates with myself and the coaching staff and with the club in a really strong and clear way and we are going to continue that. This is one of the decisions we make uh, to make the group a little bit better and try to educate them and try to get the right feedback all the time and build trust and a strong culture around the club. It is working really well, so we will continue to do that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not having that. Xhaka that told us to F off cannot be club captain. To be honest, he shouldn't even be here. So coming out with, oh, he maybe Xhaka, um, we have a really strong leadership group. Is a leadership group, is it, is it strong telling the fans to F off? Is that a strong leadership group? Is it? Because to be honest, after that, you shouldn't even be in this squad. You shouldn't even be in this club. That is unacceptable. So at the end of the day, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. And, and this is where he starts getting me vexed. If I see Xhaka as captain, I swear down, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to absolutely lose it. He was asked on how important the appointment of the next captain is. It is really important, but for me, having the leadership group is something that has been tremendously helpful because then you get different voices. It is really a multicultural dressing room uh, that needs a lot of attention and different feelings and different languages. They all need to be involved and I'm comfortable with that. Well, if it's really important, why are you putting somebody that even take away the fact that Xhaka told us to F off? He, the first thing a captain needs to 100% have is be dropping 8 or 9 out of 10s every match. A, a player that's a captain has to be reliable. And Xhaka's not been reliable. He's had the most flipping mistakes leading to goal opportunities for, for the opposition. So why would you put it in somebody that you can't trust? Somebody that flipping tells the fans to F off. Somebody that hasn't upped his game and is probably one of our worst players in this squad. And is dead wood. I don't know, Mikel. I don't know. And this is why... People like me get onto you because it's just, I don't even know what he's on about. He's blabbering nonsense. Uh, on the impact of the decision on the dressing room, Mikel said they accept the decision and I think they know because they have committed to it and have demanded it. That we take our culture and our demands and who do we want to be as a club and how we want to represent this club to a different level. When those standards are not met, you know you cannot participate in our daily basics. Yeah, cool. I'm cool with that. Uh, to be honest, I have nothing really to add to that. Uh, what else was he asked? Um, on how big a test this of a leadership qualities of the squad. What the hell? The hell they? How are they writing these questions? Oof. On how the team is looking in terms of fitness. Um, oh, forget that. On West Ham's form this season and how impressed he has been. Very much, uh, and for me, one of the best teams in the league. This period, the understanding they have, the clarity in what they want to do and how much they are able to hurt teams with the way they play has been impressive and they have been really, really consistent. Okay, cool, so why haven't we been consistent? Why have we not been consistent in our approach towards the bigger squads and the bigger, the bigger clubs? How come we can't get any points out of the bigger clubs? How about that? How about the journalists ask him that? Hmm? Why don't they follow th that him with that question? Because at the end of the day, if West Ham can do it and they haven't spent a bunch of money and we spent more money than them in the last transfer window, more than any other club, how come we're inconsistent still against the top six time, uh, top six sides? Chatting was. Well, how about that? Why don't they ask him that? On whether he would consider selling Abba in January, I can say right now that we have made this decision. Unfortunately, it's a really tough one. And obviously, if I have to choose, I would not like to be sitting here talking about it. Um, but for now, he is not involved in the squad. Like he's going to come out and say, yeah, we're selling Aubameyang. Like, it's just a waste of a question. Like, ask him flipping proper questions. Like, what's going on here? Like, oh, and when he will be back in the squad. What I can say for now is that you can understand it is a lot to digest and a really difficult decision to make. So we need a, a bit of time. Um, on whether there's a way back for Oba, well, beggars can't be choosers. It's not like Lacazette is banging in loads of goals. We've got flipping Nketiah that's about to leave. We've got Balogun that can't get a game. So what kind of question is that? 
flipping hell, man. Honestly, these journalists, man, and how he would describe his relationship with Abba, and whether Abba uh, disputed the decision, he said no, and whether he agreed with it. Um, who cares if he agreed with it or not? Like, that's the rules. That's it. If you don't listen to it, then tough luck. You're going to get penalised. Um, on which players could come into the leadership group, um, whatever, really, really had that. On whether the the, uh, the news could unite the team. What the, what the hell? On if the decision would have been made regardless of Abba's form. Without a question of a doubt. Okay, cool. Um, on if uh, Aubameyang has apologised. I cannot discuss what I have discussed with him. Why can't you not just say if he apologised or not? Well, what's the big deal on that? Like, on if Xhaka could be the new captain. Flipping hell. Puta que pariu. Porra. Oh. Granite is one of the captains. He's part of the leadership group. And is a really important player for us. An important player for us. Really. Okay. So the player that's made the most mistakes in this club. And in the Premier League. Is the player that is one of our captains. And this is what's wrong with Arsenal Football Club. We keep going round and round in circles. We're putting Xhaka again. Last time he was captain, where did we finish? Eighth. So what, what, what is the point? What is the point? When you have Tierney there, you have flipping Gabriel that's there, and you have Ramsdale that's there. All three of them would make better captains than Xhaka. So I, I'm just so sick of, like, we have got no other option. There's no other player but Xhaka to be flipping captain. Like, come on, man. Come on. Like, honestly, man. Up the standards. The standards at this club is appalling, man. Porra. On if there's been any positive COVID tests at the club. No, we haven't had any players uh, test positive. On if Abba has played his last game for us. Well, of course not. On if the situation is similar to Ozil's departure. It's a really particular situation. First of all, with the importance that the player has uh, has at the club with their role, the relationship that I have with him. But unfortunately, this is a situation that we have and we have to face it. Well, you haven't really answered the question. Is it similar to Ozil or not? Like, for me, the both of them got a big flipping wage, a big deal, big contract, and then the performance is dipped. So there's some correlation there. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know, Arteta, but, you know, this manager loves to duck and dive questions. You know what I mean? If it doesn't fit his agenda, then he just ducks and dives them. You know what I mean? But, um, on if he was expecting to make the announcement, who cares, like, on if uh, Abba's news can inspire the team, they should be up for the game regardless of this happened or not. Like, who, on whether football could go back uh, behind closed doors. Can we have some questions about the West Ham game? Like, What's he going to do? How is he going to set up the team? What, what are we looking to do? Like, can we have some technical questions? Like, does it have to just keep going around with the same safety questions? Like, flipping hell, man. And whether there's an ongoing disciplinary situation with Abamyang. What I can say, again, is that we have made this decision based on certain moments where he has not fulfilled his duties and that's it. That expectation and commitment that we need from every player, uh, that's uh, at a different level. That's why we are focused uh, to make that decision. Okay. All right, Mikel. Um, on whether there's things that he can't discuss about the situation. Well, if you can't discuss it about the situation, why are you asking him it? Like, it's a waste of question, man. Can we get some questions about West Ham? Flipping hell. On whether it could be a fresh start for the team and supporters. <laughs> fresh start? Wait, hold on. When did the season start? And we're talking about fresh start. We should be focused and ready for every opposition from the start of the first match of the season. Not not in these fresh matches and fresh starts, you know, quarter or halfway down the flipping season. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to hear all of this. Like, nonsense. On how big the, the West Ham game will feel to the players. Finally, a West Ham flipping question. You know what I mean? Well, it's a big game because the position they are in, the position that we want to be in tomorrow... We have the opportunity at home in front of our people to do that. That will be a big, big boost. Well, it would be a big boost if we can flip in win, Arteta. How about that? How about beat them? You know, a team that's flipping in front of us and we spend more money. We're the bigger club. They're acting like the bigger club. They got a manager that actually has a style of play 
they got a manager that's actually overachieving. How about that? How about Arsenal overachieve? How about that? I don't know. Maybe we should overachieve, but we can't because we're underachieving and we um, are using our PR as a, oh, it's a trust the process. It's a youth project. It's a that. It's a that. Why can Graham Potter overachieve? Why can flipping Gerrard overachieve? Why can flipping uh, uh, Moyes overachieve at their respective clubs with less money and somewhat less talented team how come they can overachieve i don't know it's called about getting a proper manager instead of somebody that's flipping doing their apprenticeship at, at a flipping big club that's supposed to be one of the three biggest clubs in in england i don't know there you go next question last question on whether having the crowd behind us will make a difference tomorrow well you can see when the crowd gets behind the team uh the moments that the team are creating a really great example was against southampton again that's uh, what the players are talking about right now. Uh, they know tomorrow under the lights they will be right behind the team and they want to please them. <sighs> Sorry. Um, well, whether the crowd is behind us or not, why not set us up this, the right way? You're talking about Southampton, yeah? This is a team that we are superior, are inferior to us. You know what I'm saying? So regardless if the, if the crowd is behind you or not, these players need to turn up. And Mikel, you need to flip and manage this team properly and put a proper style of play. You know what I mean? The first half, is it the fans' fault that the first flipping 15, 20 minutes of the Southampton game, it was probably our worst performance of the flipping season? It's got nothing to do with the fans, yeah? Irrelevant. The, the fans is irrelevant, yeah? You put the team out, the best team to beat West Ham, the best tactics... And you go there and you get the points. We're a bigger club. We spend more money. And, and that is it. Not all because the fans weren't on our side. No, 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 no. It's irrelevant. It's 12 men against 12 men. So you do your job. And stop coming out with little scapegoat comments like that. Yeah? Because I ain't having it. Honestly, I'm not in the mood. I am not in the mood right now. And that was the press conference. Um, you know, we got West Ham. Uh, as I said, a team that's overachieving. There you go. I did. Who would have known it's possible to overachieve? You know, no. But we 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 reward um, underachieving here. You know, it was before top four wasn't good enough. Arsene Wenger gets sacked. Then sixth wasn't good enough. Uh, Unai Emery gets sacked. You know, and then now it's trust the process at eighth. You know, with no European football, and we've got one match almost every week. Um. We can't get any results out of the big teams. Well, there you go. There you go. That's the standards of Arsenal Football Club. Um, so, yeah. Obviously, Arsenal forward Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang will not be considered for selection uh, after being stripped of the captaincy due to disciplinary uh, breach. Uh, Leno and Kalazanak are unavailable. Pfft, who really cares? Because they ain't playing anyway. Kalazanak don't get in his team. And Leno, your ass can sit on the bench. Um, you don't want to commit to the club. And uh, Ramsdale hasn't put a foot wrong. So, who really cares? Um, West Ham fullback uh, Aaron Creswell uh, is back in contention after missing four games uh, with a lower back injury. Um, yeah, they've, uh, David Moyes have confirmed they don't have any COVID uh, cases. Um, and uh, what else is going on? What else is going on? Right, um, Arsenal have won 10 of their last 11 home league matches against West Ham. The Hammers have um, uh, triumphed in just two of the past 28 meetings in all competitions against Arsenal. West Ham's tally of 32 Premier League defeats in this fixture is a club record against one opponent. Um, so yeah, so all the stats are pointing for Arsenal. Uh, to win, but you know, when a club needs uh, a win, just come down to the Emirates, just come down to Arsenal, you know, we're giving out, we're giving out points galore over here, do you know what I mean, if you're half decent, you definitely got a chance against us, uh, you know, because we'll just sit back, if you bring the game to us, you know, like Everton, like Man United, like City, like Liverpool, like Brentford, then we'll concede and we'll capitulate. Uh, because we can't we can't defend against anybody that presses us. So this is it, you know. But we won against Southampton. So why am I moaning? You know, that's the level beating Southampton, as if that's something to, that's something that's an achievement that's going to get us in contention for winning the league. Which is why we're here. We're here to win the league. 
we are here to win the league. We're, this is a competition. This ain't a charity match. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. But what, why is Northside complaining? You know, we, we beat Southampton. That's it. We lost to Everton. Lost to Man United. But why am I complaining? Um, what else? Uh, Arsenal are undefeated in seven uh, home league matches. Winning the last four in a row. They have never won five in a row at the Emirates under Mikel Arteta. Well, there you go. That's, that's a stat. That's going to bite us in the ass. Um, yeah, so it is what it is, man. It is what it is. I know West Ham have suffered a lot of injuries. Um, and I know they've, you know, have had to play without their best um, defenders. Um so, you know, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, they've got players that can hurt us. They've got players like uh, Antonio, you know. They've got Lanzini could help hurt us, you know. they got they got Rice, you know. they got they got some good players, man. You know, they ain't no jokers. You know what I mean? So, pff, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. For me, we should be beating West Ham. I'm sorry, but we should be beating West Ham for me. If we don't beat West Ham, I'm going to be fuming. Like, I know they've been playing really well. Um, but at the end of the day, my expectation's always here. And we should be beating them, you know. Um, I don't know if all their players have come back. But we should be beating them. You know, I know they've got great players like Suchek, Rice, um, Bowen. Bowen's been definitely a player that I've been really impressed with uh, for West Ham. But uh, Antonio, if Antonio comes up against Ben uh, Ben, uh, ben White, he's going to get finished. Because in the air, Ben White is not commanding. Up against Gabriel, Gabriel's commanding in the box. Area Lee is really good as well. He wins his headers. Ben White, nah. So we'll see how it goes. Um, for me, my match prediction, um, I'm going to go with a 2-1 um, Arsenal. Um, I think it'll be a close match. Uh, but pff, let's see If we turn up the way we turned up In the second half against Southampton We can win If we turn up like the first 15 minutes Against uh, Southampton Then we're going to get smashed So it is what it is isn't it West Ham are no jokers You have to put respect on West Ham's name And um, it is what it is Guys thank you for the support All the new subscribers All the old subscribers Everyone this is La Familia You know what I mean I really appreciate all the support everybody in the comments um what i'm gonna try and do is a q a every sunday uh so you know be looking out for that i will be doing a live q a every sunday and um this friday i've got a special guest i've got a special guest coming in um so i'm gonna have a live um he's a tottenham fan that's all i'm gonna say he's a tottenham fan i've got a special guest coming in um, and we're going to be doing it at 6 uh, 6 p.m. on Friday, UK time. And um, yeah, it's going to be great. And uh, love and support for uh, Big Steve. Honestly, he's been really helpful. So I just want to say big, big thank you to all you guys. To Big Steve, to Lee Gunner, uh, to Goonie, Eunice, all these people that have been helping me, all these people that, you know, have, have reached out. Even, you know, everybody else like i'm sure i'm forgetting someone i've got another surprise in the pipeline but i'll keep that under wraps um because that hasn't been fully confirmed yet but yeah make sure you don't miss um my match uh reaction tomorrow after the match and then on friday me and a special tottenham guest um 6 p.m uk time on friday guys you already know how it is please smash the likes and comment down below and i'm out Familia.